as a language uh, and then quarantine hit and music really became a habit I definitely was playing every day uh, hours a day and then uh, this last year came around and I learned I was getting this full-time job as a instructor at USD teaching four classes a semester and I again had to justify my guitar playing uh, by making it related to work, by thinking of the the psychology of learning an instrument and of learning to sing, uh, and of learning all the other aspects of like art and and music playing. So I'll, I'll talk about as much of that as I can over this next, however long this takes. This is definitely not a TED talk. You can see there's an X over it. That means it's definitely not a TED talk. Don't think of it like one. Uh, so the first song I want to play called AI Afterlife for the first two verses of it. Uh, this was uh, the song I, I wrote and, and kind of created right after learning I got this position and really wanted to, to consider the psychology of writing a song, which I talked about before and of uh, playing the guitar and then thinking about it in a way that eventually I could teach other people how to do it. I've only been working on this stuff for like a year. So I've been like putting a lot of time and effort into it, but it's still not something concrete yet. I've been spending most of my time preparing classes and learning how to teach. And this has been a, a fun side project whenever I get the chance. Uh, trying to keep my hobbies alive while also doing uh, 100 hours of work a week. Uh, and some of the big things before I play this that I noticed with guitar, uh, you get taught how to move your, your left hand a lot. You get taught how to press the strings down and to move your left hand along the strings to make different notes. And that's like learning the, the words of a language. That's like learning the, the ordering of words in a language, the grammar and the syntax. Uh, but that is not all of what language is, and that's not all of what music is. Uh, and see, I'm right-handed, and my most people's right hands when they play guitar just kind of, I guess you can see my mouse, they just kind of fiddle along over the whole of the guitar and, and press the strings just to convey the words that are being expressed. But they don't do so in a very emotional or, or expressive way. Uh, so the big thing I was trying to learn over my first few years of playing is to use my right hand more to, to express the emotion of the music through the right hand. It's our voice when we're playing guitar uh, and most instruments that 
like stringed instruments where you you strum with the right hand or pick with the right hand uh and if you watch expert guitar players either like child prodigies i'll show you a video of one or really like elderly people who've been playing for decades oh uh, you see they just they don't even need to look at the strings they don't need to think about the words they're speaking and they move their whole bodies they move their right hands a lot they rock back and forth they they move their bodies in an expressive way to convey the words that are being spoken through the guitar and through the voice if they're singing so let me see that no we don't need we don't need that yet so i'll play a quick little video by marson he was on like america's got talent or something very talented young player he does covers of like full rock songs just on guitar and he's moving his whole body moving his right hand his left hand all in a very expressive way to get the the song to sound like it should sound not just the notes but the expression of it and his body is the thing that is telling the story that's that's singing the song and the instrument just you know happens to be there and, and amplifying it not gonna play too much of it uh that can go away this can come back uh so when i play i play along the uh what is it the neck of the guitar uh up here where my hand is like resting uh, and this gives me a, a broader range of movement so i can move my right hand in different ways uh around like the sides of the neck and hit these strings in a different way to make it sound differently even if though it may be the same note or same word it sounds different under different emotions and it sounds different uh, in context of different words anyway so let's play it yeah, after life <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I forgot the the first word to my own song there that i've been playing like daily for for a year it happens it happens especially when recording yourself you make a lot of mistakes but that's part of the process and one thing i learned very early on not really from learning guitar from just life is that uh mistakes are are beautiful ways to learn and maybe the best way to learn that just putting yourself into a position and allowing yourself to make mistakes especially if you're recording it and can watch it later you can observe and, and see where things went wrong and try to work on them and correct them and try to improve it uh, because in your mind you have an idea of what it should sound like you have an idea of of the way the guitar should sound and your voice should sound and your and your your body should look in the video and all that stuff and then when you make mistakes that uh, they really stand out and it shows you where you can learn and grow so i love just recording a video of myself and then watching it over and over like a hundred times or a thousand times uh, and learning from it learning like okay so i need to work on like this aspect with my hands or i need to learn on being more like moving more in the video i need to work on uh like my high range of, of vocals or whatever uh, and if you can learn to view your mistakes as as learning experiences and growing experiences and embrace them uh that's uh one of the big things you can do to to help your learning and it also just helps you think positively about life like the the things you did yesterday that are kind of cringy or the things you did years ago that you would like never do again that's not something to worry about, be anxious about. That's something to learn from. That's a, a story of you in the past making mistakes. And you can look back at it and say, uh, this, I'm not this person anymore that I was a week ago. I'm not this person I was five years ago. Uh, and I embrace my, uh, I embrace all the things that I've learned since then. I am happy that I've improved and gotten better at it. 
uh, some mistakes in the past or in, in the present can be fantastic learning experiences. Yes, yes, and, and making this mistake allowed me to, to talk for a couple minutes about making mistakes. So you can always get something out of it. Fun, fun, fun. Let's listen to the actual song now. Whoops, we don't need to see me. I kind of forgot the, the, the first word to the third verse of the song. It happens, it happens. But uh, let's move on, let's move on. That was a fun one, this is a fun one. And so along with like guitar playing and singing and stuff, I also do design and stuff. Like I want to, like in my mind, I envision my whole like, album and, and all the songs like completed and I just work to building the skills to be able to do that one of those is like graphic design and stuff I want to design my own album covers and uh, music videos and everything just a lot of fun to me to do all that stuff I love computers and programming and everything this is uh yeah yeah after after I kind of devoted myself to learning, I, I started like posting stuff to YouTube and whatever, uh, like videos to send my family and stuff. And I liked that I could like come up with an idea, uh, like for a video or song or something. And then I could like, give myself a challenge to complete uh, like two videos a week or one, one video every like two, three days, something like that. And uh, I found that an excellent way to, to make progress in a lot of areas. Like I'd get an idea for uh, like a song that, that did like one or two extra things on guitar that I hadn't mastered yet. And that had like little different vocals. And uh, I thought of like videos and things I could incorporate to like make a little progress in all the hobbies I have uh, in that span of two days. And by limiting it to, to a certain time frame, like I'm gonna I'm gonna do this in a day, I'm gonna do this in two days. That that means you, uh, well, it's fun for one thing, but you learn a lot from it. Like it, it's good to have big long term goals of I want to be, you know, famous. I want to be something, some big celebrity, some big sports player, some big whatever it may be. Uh, but that's very far away, and and you right now is probably not have all the skills and all the all the progress in life that you need to get to that point. But you set 
a goal in two days of making like a little bit of progress in everything towards that greater goal. And you keep doing that and making small little consecutive steps towards that bigger goal. Uh, it's a lot more manageable and uh, feels good. feels good because it's nice. I know what I was saying. Anyway, I'm not going to stop recording. I'm just going to keep talking. So this, I uh, was coming up with a new way of playing guitar that I'll show you when I get back there, but I wanted to create like album branding. Uh, so I gave myself two days to come up with like all the branding of the album I'm making. It's called Vermilion Waves. You probably could see because I live in Vermilion. And the basic gist is that the life comes in waves. There's kind of two aspects to it, the, the ups and the downs. That's, that's, like I said, the gist, there's a lot more to it. But I, in PowerPoint, designed these logos in a few hours, probably. Very easy to design things in PowerPoint. Uh, the red one that has like gestalt principles of the V is not really complete and the W is not really complete. You have to like fill it in with your own like thoughts and perceptions. It's uh, more like red and, you know, aesthetic, I guess. Uh, kind of represents the, the human aspect of life, of, of our interpretations and emotions and everything. Whereas the blue one, a lot more, like professional and clean and sharp and sorry, my cats distract me. Uh, all those things, all those things that it kind of represents the, the outside world and influence of uh, the, everything is the way it is and objective uh, and the world's full of, of order and uh, we're just one person in it. And then kind of combined into an album thing, but cool thing happened when I was saving one of these logos, it saved this, the, the greatest thing I've never designed. Uh, it accidentally just saved the, the dark part behind the V and the W. And it looks like a dude with a hat with an X on his face. Uh, fantastic. I always love when I'm working on something and then just something, uh, that I wasn't like looking for just like appears. And in this case, it was a logo. Sometimes it's it's lyrics to a song. Sometimes it's various other things. Uh, and the song itself, for many ways, is just one song out of the, the album. But the song itself is about like cigarettes and, and you have like a, a wave of uh, how cigarettes affect you or how vaping affects you where you get it and you feel like good and happy for a bit. Uh, and then it sort of declines and you feel worse and worse until you get it again. And then you feel happy. So it comes in waves in itself, just smoking cigarettes, uh, vaping, especially vaping, like you buy a new vape and then it's full of nicotine and then you're happy for a while and you're getting the, the amount of nicotine that your body needs because of the addiction. And then, as the level of, of nicotine in the vape decreases, so does your mood. And, and I find myself when I was vaping, just being really happy when I first started one and then it declines in happiness or I decline in happiness until uh, I get really frustrated and annoyed. And I realize that the, the vape has run out of nicotine. Then I get a new one and I'm happy again. And it's just longer form waves of like a week until the, the vape runs out. Cigarettes, it's more uh, like a couple hours. Like you smoke one, you feel good. And then, then you're in your job or whatever, and you start to get antsy and then walk out and have to smoke again, and just go through a cycle multiple times a day. Vaping's a lot different. They're both bad. Don't do either of them. Uh, but this is fun. I designed the logos and then in Unity, which is like very basic programming stuff and uh let's see it's mostly used for like making video games but i find it very good for like prototyping things as well 
I designed uh, cigarette containers, cigarette, or cartons, I guess. Warning, smoking is only a temporary solution to perpetual problems. Well, there's the lyrics. Vermilion waves, premium filtered cigarettes fade into the waves. Uh, fun stuff, fun stuff. Uh, and all of this is like default Unity assets. Like this cigarette is made up of like a few cylinders that are just textured in different ways to make it look like this. I like prototyping stuff in Unity. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, and here's a cool thing too. Well, these are buttons. Change the record, but here we go. I designed Vermilion Waves, premium cyber cigarettes fade into the waves, not for organics. So a big theme of, of the album, I guess, is uh, the red, which kind of represents the, the, the emotional like high points and intensity. And then the blue, which represents the more real world, the robotic interactions with other people. That's as much as I'll get into it. Uh, fun, fun, fun. A lot of fun to do this, though. And to give myself that challenge to do it all in two days. But from that, uh, I actually like made a music video where I... Uh, wanted to, well, I, I was testing out new audio stuff because I've talked about like the importance of expressing your songs and the guitar like through the body. And I wanted to capture that in the audio as well. So I've got binaural microphone, or binaural, yeah, yeah, microphones. Basically, this is a microphone that goes in both ears. My thought was that I could wear those while playing uh, and it would capture in the sound, like the way I moved my body from my perspective, uh, perhaps capture a lot more of the, the emotion of the songs and such uh, through my movement. And it would also add differences between the left and right. So it would add like natural stereo to the music as well. Uh, and for this song, uh, I wanted to see if I could like uh, get different sound out of that even I, I put a uh, what's it called a, a beanie I like rolled it over my face to like cover my mouth so my voice would sound more like muffled and it would like cover the binaural microphones so it would get like a different sound from the guitar and everything uh, yeah because the song's about like cigarettes I thought that would be a cool little bit of symbolism uh, but I remembered like this, this logo that just kind of surfaced and appeared. Uh, so instead of just having a black mask on, I found masking tape and put it on my face and then the hat. So I kind of matched the logo. And I guess that became my, my thing for, for like art is like the X over the face or whatever, and like a hat. Uh, some cool things come out of just randomness experimentation embracing mistakes all that uh unity from chaos like the world is full of art and then your life is full of interesting like, meaningful things all it takes is uh thinking about them or something i don't know something else inspirational you you get the picture uh so let's play this song let's just do it Yet's toxic, 
fun one this is a fun one and and with that last song the the i was learning with guitar first with this song how to use individual fingers while playing most of the time like before then i would just play chords and then just try to move my arm in different ways but it started with this where i was uh, actually like uh trying to think about like the way I was moving my my pinky and ring finger and pointer finger and stuff on my left and right hand to try to get different sounds uh so that that began the the age of the vermilion waves of moving my body in, in like a wave-like pattern and then kind of letting my fingers randomly move and that was a means of learning guitar and adding flavor into uh, the space between the chords. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so that was maybe beginning of last summer when I did that. Uh, but when it came around almost school time, I, I started getting into different instruments. I noticed that uh, I kind of plateaued with playing acoustic guitar. And I would had an electric card guitar just like sitting around. And I never used it. Uh, so I, I started playing the electric guitar around that time I finished the last song. And I found myself like learning a lot from it. It kind of elevated me past the, the plateau I was at with acoustic guitar to, to switch to a different instrument because you you move your body and your hands in a different way and it has a different effect on the sound. So you kind of learn... Uh, additional little things with the, the intricacies of playing the guitar uh, through using a different instrument that can carry over between them. So you, I think this, the more different instruments that are kind of similar that you play, the, the better you can get at all of them because little, little bits and pieces you learn from one carry over to all the others. Uh, and then after the electric guitar, I kind of figured that out that like, hey, switching instruments can actually help you learn uh, and grow. I, I got two ukuleles. This is just a normal, like $30 ukulele that you can get anywhere. Very easy to learn, very easy to play. I also got this baritone ukulele, uh, which I have good news for you. If you play guitar, if you know how to play guitar, you also know how to play baritone ukulele uh, because it is, uh, these four strings of the baritone ukulele are the exact same, uh, what is it, keys, notes. They have the exact same tuning as the bottom four strings of a guitar or the, the four high strings of a guitar. So it's basically a guitar with two fewer strings. Uh, I highly recommend it if you like want to get into an instrument because uh, it's you can play guitar songs they're just simpler the strings are farther apart and easier to press down the instrument itself is smaller more portable uh, and has a cool sound to it sadly i can't play it because mine has a, a broken string on it right now so i played it on standard ukulele but i, I highly encourage especially if you're like plateauing on your skills especially if you have like stopped making progress and you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over and not learning anything switch to a different instrument or, or vary your playing in some way or another uh yes 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 and this song itself i was moving at the time uh, and i just noticed i had like a billion little knickknacks and and what's it's and souvenirs and 
crim crams and, and all that fun stuff. Uh, so, oh man, I had so much stuff, just boxes and boxes full of crap I'd collected over the last uh, 20 years or so of life from various friends and places. Uh, and I was thinking about that while like, what do I really need this stuff? Like, wouldn't my life be less like cluttered and disorganized if I actually like, got rid of most of these like stuffed animals and things? Like I look at them and I, I'm happy for the memory and stuff, but I think I can say I've learned from my memory of, of some friend and learned from my memory of some experience. And I don't need to keep some physical keepsake of it because then my apartment is just filled with keepsakes and i i found at some point why can't i change the size of this so this is my guitar case let me change the size of it there it is okay this is my guitar case that's better that's better and i started just putting stickers on it just the uh, fun little cool things but once it got full uh it started to to mean a lot more to me because all of the stickers were there and they all had some meaning and some story behind them and they're or they make me laugh or they're they're interesting looking or something but i found when i got new stickers i would just find like the sticker i cared about the least on my guitar case like maybe it was a uh, an experience that I'd kind of learned from and I didn't really need forever on my uh, guitar. Or maybe it was something that I didn't really care about as much, some some game I didn't really love or some movie that I liked, but it really wasn't worthy of like being solidified in my memories like this. So in this way, this can go back to normal size. In this way, it's a lot like the way our memories work, that, that we build up collections of events and of people and of stories. Uh, and it's okay to let them kind of fade away as, as more interesting and important things continue to happen in your life. It's okay to not cling on to everything in one's life. Uh, once you've like learned and gained something from it, it's okay to let go uh, and by having it like this it kind of limits the space like your brain is is limited in the amount of stuff you can learn and hang on to so uh, you replace it and then the things that are interesting and stand out and you love will stay there forever and maybe they'll get covered up and changed a little but they'll always be there and if they do get covered up i mean they're still a part of you but other things have happened and you've moved on uh, what else? What else? I have a lot of stuff to say. These are my only like uh, bullet points, a couple of notes at the bottom. Don't want to waste too much time on this. So let's hear the song Reminiscent in the AM.
Okay, okay. So uh, I'll play a, a longer full song for you. I knew at this point in the video I was going to uh, just be tired of talking. I talk too much sometimes. Uh, and this, this song actually, The Millennial Itch, I, I wrote it around the same time I wrote AI Afterlife, so going back in the past a bit. Uh, and I was really trying uh, vocal range at this point. Uh, mostly, I mean, not really just like high and low pitch of singing, but uh, trying different like accents. So this is the first song I ever wrote as like a, a folk song or like a country song or something. And I sing in a countryish accent. Usually I don't talk much in like a Southern accent, but I can sing in it occasionally. So by doing that, uh, I learned you have to like move your body in particular ways to get the sounds that you want to come out, especially if you're talking in a way that you're not used to, like in an accent, or especially if you're singing, when you're singing, you don't sound like you do when you're talking. So you have to uh, train your muscles in your, your throat and your tongue to express those different uh, you know, ranges of, of pitch and express the, the emotion in a different way that fits like the theme of what you're going for with the singing. Uh, so that's something like uh, when, I, when I was singing this in the country-ish accent, I had to learn to just move my body in different ways. And, and one of those was through pacing. Like I, I paced a lot during quarantine and I paced a lot uh, while I like play guitar at home. Uh, and every time you take a step while you're pacing, your like body moves in a characteristic way. Like you have a lot of force that goes downward in your uh, like throat and in your body and in your hand. Uh, so from that, I, I learned that you really have to like express with your body to make the sounds come out in the correct way. So if you like let yourself drop or you like take a step while you're talking it goes like uh, i don't know if it, <laughs> i don't know if that picked up at all maybe i should turn the camera on hello hello, hello. so if you like one two three and then and, and just that happens a lot when you're pacing and and it happens a lot when you uh move around while you're playing guitar like your your voice will naturally change because your muscles have to react to the way your body is moving and like uh it reacts to the, the stomping every time you pace and if you're standing and playing if you like, move your body your your torso will change and then push out air in a different way and your your throat will change a little bit uh so you can express a lot through your body while you're learning and uh to like get the the right sounds out of the guitar and then once you've kind of taught your muscles to sing in that way to to capture like the the falling uh way that your your voice changes when you're taking steps or to capture the way it changes when you like sh move your head or something uh, you like record in your mind that this is the way your muscles move when that sound is being made. And when you're playing guitar and just standing still, you can activate those muscles as if you were moving and expressing emotion, uh, but you've trained them enough that you can condense them down into uh, a more, more appealing, less, less energetic sort of expression of the music. If that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, let's see, let's see. So let's play it. Here's the millennial itch. It'll give me a, a four minute, 20 second break to actually think about what I'm going to talk about after this. <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. 
trying to make something of myself Where the fun and that I'd rather break down and start over from scratch I lie awake stressing about my debts Yeah, that's just where I am at Fun stuff, fun stuff. And I don't think I mentioned like that, that thing I did with uh, the mask and the X that kind of transitioned into wearing quarantine mask with an X on it. Uh, not just for any sort of anxiety reasons or anything. I find it, especially when I'm using the microphone like in class and it's right next to my face, it acts as a, a pop filter. It, it which means it like filters out the p -p the the p sounds and the cuss sounds because those sound really abrasive in the speakers if you just talk into a microphone with them. Uh, and it, it lets me uh, not think about what I'm doing with my mouth, just like the the glasses let me not think about what I'm doing with my eyes, and I can just express the 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 song or whatever. Uh, let's not skip ahead. Let's not skip ahead. So all of that stuff uh, was like summer, last summer. Uh, and then when school came around, I really didn't have time 
to like do two minute like uh, videos or not two minute do like two day videos that I planned or, or like spend a whole day just working on aspects of, of guitar and songwriting instead I had to cram it in like an hour a day and do as much as I can and, and work on it as much as possible between doing like work for school uh, and I found that to be very uh, good couldn't think of a better word sorry so uh, what I mean is that like throughout the whole semester I had like the idea of a song on my head and I just kind of added to it every day and that's all I could do so I love how uh, like having it as a hobby like that it, it could like encapsulate that time frame of my life in this case it was last semester I was working like 100 hour weeks doing school stuff and barely finding time to do this so uh it took like months to write it and and it contains like all of the things that happened to me throughout that time little bits and pieces from topics i taught in classes that made their way into it uh, and uh, things that happened with my friends and in my personal life all kind of made it into it uh, so uh, it represents that whole like semester of my life and whenever i sing it or whenever i watch the video or whatever think about it i think i'm reminded of all those moments and i i love how a song can at least to me like capture so many things in in such a little time period this song though love ya love ya it started out as really well i guess like the main theme of it is that i was really uncomfortable last semester like I, I started teaching and I started putting a ton of effort into it and then I kept hearing things like from social media I don't have any myself but I'd hear from friends like oh your students are calling you a, a vape god and they're talking about their their seats being wet and they're talking about uh like you being their favorite professor and they're loving you there were even posts like I love you Logan Tyler Hale like my whole name it was a lot it was a lot of pressure and more so it made me feel like all the stuff i was doing like to make classes interesting and to, to try to like help people was like manipulation in a way like i that's just who i am and what i want to do as i want to help people but like getting all the positive like feedback made me really uncomfortable like what i was doing was uh i don't know not me i guess so this song captures, among like everything else that happened that semester, it captures my uh, uncomfortability with uh, positive feedback, I guess. And that kind of sounds sad when I say it out loud, but let's listen to it. Let's listen to it. I'm going to turn it up really high because it was recorded secretly by someone in my class. Love you. If you're bored, I'll write a song for you. Uh -huh. I, 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 I. 
couple minutes of me playing electric guitar. Or not minutes, a couple seconds. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And yeah, I played the YouTube video because I forgot when I was recording all the other songs to actually play that song for some reason, even though it's really like important to me. And that was like all I wrote in that like four or five month time span. Uh, and performing, uh, really, really difficult. Like I'll tell you as a professor and, and I mean, that was difficult, like singing and stuff in front of people that uh, the biggest thing I, I found of kind of getting over that is uh, kind of comes from developmental psychology. I, I uh, study a lot how like little little kids, like infants, not infants, like toddlers and, and preschoolers, how they practice socializing with other people. And they do it by uh, just imagining themselves in those situations. And when I started, when I learned I was going to be a professor, I started uh, imagining like my my speech that goes on in my head uh as if i were standing in front of like a lecture hall full of students uh so like my my thoughts uh i mean yeah, yeah my thoughts became more like tailored to to how a professor is supposed to talk because i was constantly like preparing myself for the role of being a professor of talking in front of other people but even without them being there. Uh, it's the same with like playing guitar for other people. Like you can play all day, like by yourself and practicing the notes and getting good at it. But it's a completely different situation uh, when you're with like another person playing around them. Uh, your body is going to be like naturally like nervous and, and paying attention to, to everything that they're doing and their judgments and stuff. Uh, and you know, the context of the situation, it might not be like your, your apartment, your dorm room, it could be their house, or, or it could be some public place where you're playing. Uh, so to it, actually prepare yourself to, to like play in an in like a social setting with other people, you need to practice it first in your mind by just like, uh, while you're playing, imagine that you're in uh, a bar at an open mic night or something just playing you imagine you're sitting with a group of your friends and you're playing you imagine you're playing for one of your family members or something your your parent and kind of put yourself mentally in that scenario while you play and you should feel like the nervousness in your body as if you are actually there and it'll help you get over it and it'll help you learn to play in any situation uh, regardless of what's going on with your body and regardless of what's going on in your mind and regardless of what's going on in, in the world around you. So especially when starting off, if you plan on doing something like public with it or sharing it with people, start imagining yourself in those scenarios and then try to 
push yourself out of the comfort a little bit uh, every once in a while. Or maybe you have a friend over and you play a little bit of your guitar. Or maybe you, you hum or whistle or sing a, a little bit. And, and you notice that, okay, it's fine. Like they enjoy it or they uh, don't care, whichever it may be. They're probably not going to get mad at you for playing guitar. Uh, I still haven't been able to, to sing in front of anyone except for like one of my friends and then somehow my, my classes. But I kind of get used to performing for my classes through, through teaching. So transitioning to guitar is not too difficult like psychologically surprisingly i didn't make any mistakes when i actually sang in person that time but i'd mentally prepared for like a couple weeks at least beforehand when i decided i wanted to, to sing in front of class uh so this song this song the i started writing this like after uh last semester ended so around like winter times uh, called Drift Away, kind of some some difficult things happened with a friend of mine, and I tried to help, and I kind of said too much, made it worse. Uh, I felt like I like broke our friendship. We're we're friends again now. We're very good friends. But uh, this song is about uh, it's okay to let people go, basically. Like both from my perspective, that it, it's okay that I made a mistake and. I lost a friend and I, I learned from the experience uh, and that's like in the past and it's okay on their end that it's that if someone hurts you uh, to move away, even though you may be like attached and you may be really good friends or whatever it may be. Uh, sometimes life happens and moving away from each other is not the end of the world. Uh, and if you're like a healthy individual who can take care of themselves is autonomous and can can survive on their own uh, these connections with other people are fantastic and wonderful uh, but they don't need to be permanent you can learn from your years spent with a friend and or your your years you spent with a family member and, and get the most out of it and even if they leave even if they die whatever it may be uh, it's best to make the, the best of it and as much as you can carry them with you through life and move forward with things they taught you and you'll survive, you'll do fine. Sorry, I'm getting a little distracted. This reminds me of my uh, other people I've lost in my life. And I've found with, with death of, of loved ones, it's a lot similar, like, they helped you along the way. They, they helped you be who you want to be. And then once they leave, you're not stranded in the middle of nowhere. You're, you're fine. You can just drift with life away from that person and learn as much as you can from it and try to be, in the case of someone dying, try to be the, the person that uh, you would be proud to to be around them or, or be a person that like learned from all your experiences with your family member. I'm trailing off. I'm trailing off. I often trail off when I'm not uh, uh, teaching in front of class. I'm just kind of talking. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. So this song get back to the music the, the song uh i have been coming back to it i haven't really finished it yet i started it and then the semester started so i stopped working on it and now i'm just getting back to it and it has a different meaning to me now that like i'm going away from vermilion and all the things i uh like love here and to somewhere else but i'll be fine and vermilion will be fine without me uh and I've been incorporating new stuff into this. Mostly, I, I've talked about my right hand and how I try to use my right hand as much as possible and move my hand along the, the neck of the guitar to get as much emotion as I can from it. But lately, I've been working a lot more on my left hand, uh, moving the individual fingers of it and you know, putting more like 
forced into the left arm to get different sounds out and kind of rotating my left arm a lot more. Uh, so it's the right and left arm working together. Uh, and I just do that by like focusing on maybe like one muscle or something. I'll focus on like my shoulder muscle. And if you pull back your shoulder muscle, that, that causes you to like press down on the strings of the guitar a little bit more. And it makes it easier to do like slides, uh, which is the new th big new thing I'm doing with this song is I'm actually, instead of just playing chords, like doing a slide with like a bar chord along the, the neck. Uh, and I learned that by just playing the song over and over and over again, uh, focusing on different like single muscles at a time, like the shoulder and the forearm, what's the forearm doing? And then what's your, your pointer finger doing? And what's your, you know, upper arm doing your bicep and your tricep. And then you, you learn what all the muscles feel like to make the guitar sound like correct, to make the song sound correct. And over like countless repetitions of that, your body learns the movements required to express the different sounds as you think of them. You're, you're training your body to express the, the sounds in the way that they should hear, or that, that they should hear, that they should sound. Uh, and it's best to think of guitar playing as that instead of like, here's the locations on the guitar where I put my fingers to make certain sounds. It's like, here's like the muscles that activate in my body to create that certain sound. Uh, Cause the instrument is part of us, isn't the part of us. The, we only have control over our bodies. Our brains only recognize our bodies. They sense the guitar, but the guitar is not part of it. So uh, you need to think about the sound related to the exact like muscle movements that are occurring and then it can build in your cerebellum uh, i'm trying not to throw too many psychology words out, but it can build in your cerebellum like a, a library of different body positions and movements to get certain feelings uh, and qualities of sound from the instrument so Again, and it's like pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Just learn like one or two new things at a time. Try to incorporate that into a song and then repeatedly do it over and over again until the muscle memory has been established. Uh, I think I only have, yeah, one verse of this. Let's play Drift Away. <laughs> Good stuff, good stuff. And the last song I want to play for you before I end this is 
uh, the one I've been working on this semester. Uh, you were kind of there for for the beginnings of it. Uh, some somebody on social media called me Daddy Logan ASMR, or call my class that at least, and that got me interested in. I, I knew about ASMR, but I didn't really ever watch it or care about it. And even even since I got into it, I've only listen to that first two minutes of that one video I made. And then after then, I've been like researching it and stuff. Really not my thing, ASMR. Uh, but this song, like initially when I started thinking about it, it was just like, I want to capture my experience doing ASMR for the first time uh, just in like three verses of like, oh, here's expectations, here's the experience, and here's like my sentiment afterwards, like I had you do for some, some of the assignments. Uh, and then... I don't know, the idea came to do a lecture on it. And then I, I also did a couple lectures on it in my research methods class where I looked into the research behind it and like thought of some experiments to do with it. Uh, so it also became about like my obsession. And so I've, I've talked about this before, like weeks ago, weeks ago. And like when I talked about art and everything, so I don't get too too detailed into it, but it, it contains just like that Love You song contained all my stuff from last semester. This song contains a bunch of uh, events and and people from this semester and, and it contains things from all the classes I happen to be teaching like I'm teaching developmental psych so I have words like proximal distally in there proximal distal is is growth from uh, the uh, from like the torso out to the extremes but I guess symbolically it's like uh, uh, like your heart like things in your heart kind of making their way to the extremes and, and causing action in your body. Uh, so you're being controlled by like a uh, feeling or emotion uh, that you, that uh, is causing frustration. And then the, the ASMR response itself is a, is a cephalocaudal response, which I don't have here because it's in verse two. And I'm not done with verse two of a cephalocaudal response goes from your head down to like your, your feet. So it'll go from your top of your spine down to your fingertips and your toes, which is how ASMR works. Uh, and then I have some like uh, neurotransmitters and stuff. So it's a nerdier song, I think. A lot of fun though, a lot of fun. Uh, what else, what else? And then this, this is the song I definitely play the most. I don't sing it the most. I just like practice the guitar aspect of it. And I'm really, really this semester working on all the individual fingers and uh, trying to be like more precise with them rather than just moving my finger across the whole guitar, like hitting individual strings with an individual finger uh, and, and actually making uh, like melodies out of it, out of the individual strings. Uh, I'm not great at explaining guitar stuff. You might have learned because uh, I don't have like a tutor. I never used a tutor and I don't really like watch videos or anything of other people doing it. I'm trying to teach myself. So a lot of the terms escape me. Uh, and lastly, before I play it, it's just, uh, I hope that all of you find ways to to integrate your various hobbies into your uh careers and into your lives in a meaningful way. I I read your like dream jobs and I've read a lot about your other interests and, and hobbies throughout the course in your first papers. And it I sincerely hope that you all get to, you know, uh cook and play volleyball and coach and and uh, own like a B and B or something and, and all those different little things that you want to do in your life. Even if they're not your career, I hope you find ways of of expressing that passion for something still in your life, even if it may not be uh, your full job, it could be something that you do in your spare time or you, like me, try to integrate into your job. Like a lot of the stuff I've talked about this semester with music and art and the creative therapies uh, and music and like language, uh, various other things have, have come from my hobbies and I've found a way to integrate like psychology and music and, and teaching all sort of in one uh, so I can do all that at once. I'm still figuring it out and finding the balance with it but uh, 
work isn't everything and life is long. I'm only 30 something years old, almost 32 now, I think. And uh, you can't just live your whole life after like careers uh, and money and everything and accomplishment. You have to do things for, for fun and enjoyment as well. Take care of yourself, all that stuff. Uh, I have about a million motivational things I want to tell you. I have a million more things I want to tell you about guitar, but this is, uh, eh, eh. Uh, better for me to just, just do this quick and get out of the way than try to create something well-constructed that would take too long and I have to get back to grading finals. So here we are, ASMR or like uh, two, two fifths of the song, I would say. Let's play it. Happy late April Fools, I guess, uh, and couldn't resist, couldn't resist. So actually, I do like to play Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley before I play the ASMR song. I find the themes to be kind of uh, different, but also like very similar and like uh, in Never Gonna Give You Up, it's all about like offering like complete devotion to someone without really knowing everything about them. It's just like, let's let's just do this uh, and this asmr song is a lot about that as well it's about uh you see something new to me it was asmr itself and you kind of get obsessed with it and give your like life and attention to it uh so i think it captures that 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 obsession aspect of the song very well and it's fun to play never gonna give you up and it kind of puts my body movements in the right like uh I don't know the word, in the right like sync to be able to to express the feelings of the ASMR song too. Uh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. And if you play like uh, covers of songs, like the emotion is already there, and you can hear them like expressing the emotion. So it's it's just about trying to like mimic the emotion that they're expressing and mimic the their body movements. Because in your head, you you see what the song should sound like. Uh, that that maybe didn't make sense you hear what the songs should sound like uh, exactly and then you kind of make mistakes and 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 slowly like refine your movements and your style of playing until it sounds a little bit more like the song and then a little bit more like the song pounding out the mistakes learning the muscle movements involved with with expressing that particular emotion in that particular way uh so that's great. It's great for practicing that because you can hear the ideal version of the song and you're just trying to make progress towards it. Uh, in the beginning of playing guitar, I like to play All of Me by John Legend. It's like uh, not very many chords, like seven chords or so and very like slow uh, and like methodical. So, so I could uh, continuously just practice that song over and over until it sounded a little bit more like it was supposed to and then a little bit more like it was supposed to. Uh, and and through that you develop your your like muscle memory and you develop the ability to like hear the way the sound is supposed the song is supposed to sound and such. Uh, lots of repetition, lots of repetition, especially for the first two or three years of playing. It just just pick things that you're familiar with, repeatedly go after them until you are better at them than you were the day before, and you keep doing that.
Uh, let's see. Let's actually play the song now, though. Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Well, well, well. Uh, good luck on finals, everyone. Good luck in life. Like I said earlier, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever this happens to be. And uh, thanks for a great semester. Thanks for being a part of this part of my life. Uh, I never figured out how to end things, never figured out how to end things. Sorry, I couldn't make this more produced and put more work into it but also i i like just being able to to be myself a little bit with my students and myself is i i stumble around on my words and trail off and forget what i'm talking about a lot uh and i have a lot to say and just not enough time or, or preparation to say it in the correct way eh that's life for me that's fine i'm having fun uh hope like I said, you all have fantastic lives and goodbye. <laughs>